So hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my small YouTube channel about knitting, or mostly knitting. My name is Isabel. I am in France. I have three sons and I have three cats. Some say it's related. And I'm bringing you these videos in English because I miss my English. I used to live in the United States, but that was over 30 years ago. And I miss talking in English. I can read, write, can uh, listen to shows or movies in English. No problem. But I miss talking in English. And that's at least once a week or so uh, the opportunity for me to be talking in English. Uh, so today it's going to be a video about my own knitting adventures, what I've been working on and everything on a very regular format you can find about everywhere else. So uh, if you can uh, uh, accept uh, or uh, ignore my accent and hesitations and if this sounds good to you, please stay tuned. So, okay, first things first. What am I wearing before I forget? Uh, I'm wearing my summer sorrel I knitted last year from, uh, so it's uh, from uh, Woolen Pine. I have the regular uh, sorrel. Um, I brought the yarn in my, uh, in my room. I took it out of my storage space and brought it here. So I need to cake it and, you know, cast on the regular sorrel for this winter, but it's still a bit warm, so I'm not sure I want to be knitting with uh, mohair, even though you'll see uh, <laughs> I have been knitting with mohair and I will be knitting again uh, with mohair. So, but anyway, the regular sorrel is close by uh, to be started. It's close to be started, close to be casted on. And so the summer sorrel, I used some uh, yarn uh, from someone um, in France. Uh, it's Ars Natura Creation. And she sells her yarn on Etsy. And uh, uh, she had these beautiful blue and white and summer skin, you know, I, summer type of color for me, to me. Um, you know I like blue, so uh, yeah, that's what I did. It was a very enjoyable knit, and uh, I think I will enjoy uh, the regular sorrel, uh, knitting the regular sorrel too. Okay, so um, since my last knitting adventures, I have two finished objects, but one one you have already seen, and I'm not sure I'm going to... I talked about it uh, during uh, the video about my yarn, no by year, and the July chicken. Uh, I, I have finished the painting triangle shawl from Stephen West. I'm not going to be talking much about that, um, especially the process about the uh, uh, no by year and why I enjoyed knitting it because it's uh, turning some cotton I do not like into a uh, a shawl I, I love. Uh, but anyway, this cotton I do not like is hobby uh, cotton. It has long fades. I already used it uh, to knit a, a papillon shawl for my beloved sister-in-law two years ago. And I still do not like it. It's very splitty. Um, there are a lot of little threads, uh, maybe 14, 15 of them. And when, um, when you knit, even with a bamboo needle, it's very splitty. Um, and if you don't see it, 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 it's a bit of a pain. So um, I haven't weighted out how much I have left. Uh, some colors I'm almost out. This part I used the next uh, to the white one because I used all of the white part uh, where is it? Where is it? All the white I used here, so I have no more white. Um, so I haven't weighted out what I have left, uh, but I will, I will continue to be using what I've left, either for some, you know, visible creative mending. I've been willing to be doing this, and I have a couple white t-shirts that I knitted uh, that are started to get 
a bit brownish, greenish, uh, no, not green, uh, grayish at the neckline, just because we wear it. And uh, you know, just the natural oils, not even makeup, but the nat natural oils stain the white uh, cotton. So I think I'm gonna do some kind of, you know, neckline here with some of the blues. Anyway, um, this shawl, I've been wearing it. It's, you see, it's, I, I washed it in the washing machine. <laughs> to block it and I, you know, just I, after that I hang it, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, pulling on it so that the stitch is open. And uh, yes, I've been uh, wearing it anytime the weather has been a bit uh, cooler, uh, not that much. So all my windows are open. So uh, if in my neighbor, uh, uh, has kids in her garden right now and if they are too busy uh, I guess I have to go and uh, shut my windows but my, my cats enjoy to be able to cross the house without having to ask me to open the door so for now I'm leaving my doors open and uh, uh, I have the painting triangles uh, shawl next to me by Stephen West I forgot to say that so okay another finished object that I haven't been talking about uh, so far is what I called my mystical peonies call. So I used um, all of Trelly's yarns I have. I had bought her birthday um, mystery box last summer. So last summer was these peach, uh, kind of peach and clear uh, merino and uh, mohair. Uh, I knitted a shawl from that, you know, Fresh Peonies um, uh, box. Uh, the green part here is uh, from the Mystical um, box that she released. No, not the Mystical. I have to check. It was the Christmas, last Christmas uh, box. So there was a pattern for hat and mittens by uh, Meret uh, Bitsberger and she's boots area about everywhere and uh, uh, so I use the same pattern to knit the cold so here at the top is the green for the Chris from the Christmas uh, mystery box the green merino type of green and the green um, mohair here I uh, you know used the clear the lighter mohair from last year's uh, mystery box with the rest of the green merino so i have none left i used all the clear uh you know fresh peony um merino and i finished a bit here fresh peony mohair and uh, i used the deep end uh merino with the rest of the uh, uh, last Christmas mystery box with uh, the matching mohair uh, from last Christmas too. Um, so I used all this uh, up and I did not use the blue, the, the ice sky blue because I did not think it was uh, from, so I use the deep end in my um, Stephen West um, slip extravaganza, and I have the blue too from Freddy's. I did not think it was, you know, going uh, to match the other colors, so I left it out, and I will use it in some kind of other project. So I now have a coal that is with all my leftovers, but the blue, and seven grams of this mohair. Uh, from trellis so I'll be wearing it uh, most probably that way I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wear it it's, it's gonna be too too warm but you see what it's you know how it will look like some kind of you know like that and I can roll it to have only two colors whatever uh, it's very soft very warm it will be very warm and uh, uh, I did now need now to decide what I'm gonna do with it, that. I have seven grams, so it's about 50 or 58 meters. It's not enough to do what I had, I had in mind, and I'm going to be talking about that just next. Okay, so I had been in the process of thinking, what am I going to be 
knitting for Christmas? Am I going to be knitting for Christmas? Um, last year, I did a lot of knitting with beautiful yarns and I realized that gifting to my sons um, and my mother, even, even though she knows how to deal with that, uh, as she's losing her kind of her mind and memory and everything, I'm not sure. Uh, but giving uh, presents to my sons that require some kind of delicate uh, attention when you want to wash it or, you know, I, I, I thought it was a bit difficult to realize that for them because they receive something for me, they want to take care of it and they don't want to ruin it and I'm telling them, you know, be careful <laughs> if you ever want to wash it or, you know, you called me before or you bring it home and I take care of it. It's not, it was, you know, they're okay, they did not say anything, but I think it was a bit difficult for them to receive a present they need to be so careful about and if they ruin it, they're going to be feeling very bad, maybe they won't tell me. Anyway, um, you may remember my mother gave me all the remaining of her stash, of a yarn stash, and I have two of these creamy white um, uh, big balls, uh, a bit, you know, with a bit of a fluff. It's a 15% percent, uh, fifteen percent wool and uh, uh, I'm going to check. Okay, 12% wool and 88% I guess acrylic. Um, this yarn won't be difficult to take care of because it says it can be uh, machine washed um, at, you know, guess 30 degrees, whatever, you know, that is in Fahrenheit, but, you know, on, I guess on delicate cycle. Um, I have two of them. So that's one uh, 500 ball, uh, grams ball. And so I said, okay, I thought, okay, I'm not sure what I want to do with that. And uh, uh, I'm going to, I will be able to knit uh, presents for Christmas. And my first idea, and I may get to it at some point because I haven't cast it on, is to knit a muscle burr or a couple, as many as I can muscle burr hats with that white. And I have a black, um, uh, a bit heavier, so this is sports weight, a bit heavier yarn, but I, I, can, I can make it work. Uh, so, you know, half of the hat being white, the other half being white, and if they want to, uh, you know, roll the brim, they will have a white border, whatever. I think it was going to be nice, and the other one is 100% acrylic, so uh, not a delicate gift, and nonetheless a gift uh, that I have knitted. So, okay, so I'm going to be, and I want to use this yarn for uh, presents. What am I going to be knitting? And I will be talking in a future video that I haven't uh, filmed yet because I want to uh, revive and start again my Wooly News series. So stay tuned. And, uh, you, know, you know, subscribe and get notified so that you know whenever I will be uploading such a video. Uh, everyone is all about little scarves right now well, however you call them, ascot or whatever. Um, this <laughs> trend, um, I had been wearing, you know, little scarves like that for <laughs> 30 years, maybe more than that. So, you know, fashion comes in loops and in circles. And, you know, I guess we are back into small, small scarves. So I said, okay, I'm going to be knitting small, small scarves, small scarves for, um, my son's girlfriends, maybe my sister-in-law, my nephew's girlfriends, and everything. Okay, fine, and this is a good uh, yarn for that. So I looked for patterns, of course, there are many of them. And uh, uh, I got, and I will also be talking about that uh, in my uh, uh, No Buy Year, the August check-in. Uh, Pia from uh, 50 Fabulous, 
um, talked about last week, I think, in her last week video. I, I think it was last week from what, when I'm filming this, we are on uh, August 24th. About a scarf that she had been designing, but everywhere I've been talking about uh, little scarves, she released the pattern a bit ahead of time. It's the heat wave scarf, and it's uh, supposed to be knitted with less weight mohair at a big gauge, you know, with big needles. Unfortunately, there I have not enough of that left, uh, so that I could have knitted a sample for myself and see how it. You know the pattern. I got the pattern. So uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed. I don't have enough. But anyway, I said no problem. I have that big ball of uh, um, mostly acrylic yarn, and I want to need presents with. It's not at all lace weight mohair. It's sports weight. Let's make a sample so that I can see how it goes. Okay, so I knitted, and it's a finished object. I knitted a heat wave scarf. And the way, what I liked is that she said, um, and I was doing this when I was a kid too. I was using small scarves with a hole so that you can, you know, uh, tuck one end into the hole so that you don't have a knot at your neck and it's not bulky and heavy and you can put it under uh, sweaters when you're a kid or uh, shirts if you're a grown up adult. Um, so uh, when when you need the scarf, the holes are supposed to be uh, the ones you yarn over when you increase uh, for the tip of the scarf. And it's making a beautiful, you know, like bunny ears that you can place into your shirt or whatever. Knitting with that bulky uh, sports weight uh, yarn uh, made that uh, the holes are not enough for me to tuck the end in. So on the other end, I made I made a hole myself so that uh, the end can be tucked in. So if I wear it, and it's not at all what Pia intended intended as uh, as a look, and I don't think I like this scarf with that yarn but anyway that's what it looks like i guess i'm gonna keep that one for myself unless you tell me you think it's fine and i will be able to gift it to someone so you know um with that part that you can have under your shirt um under your um coat i like this idea very 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 much so you can see this Maybe I can knit some more and give them. What do you think? Tell me down in the comment what you think. But um, and I was thinking I want to knit a, a neutral color because uh, or white, not black, uh, because my eyes don't like it. But I don't know if if this is fine to you. I I I I, need, I, I can't wear it right now. It's so hot or much too hot to wear it. Uh, and it's not at all what she has uh, intended, intended in, uh, for the pattern. So I said, okay, that yarn won't work for me, in my opinion, right now with that pattern, even though, you know, now that I see it like that, maybe, maybe it could work. Maybe it could work. Yeah, tell me what you think. Uh, so um, what am I going to be doing? I have, uh, from last year, uh, some Fonti, 70% uh, mohair, 30% polyamide. It's 25 grams per 250 meters. So uh, that's uh, 1,000 meters per 100 grams. Uh, so it's, you know, cobweb or lace weight. Uh, so I can knit, I have two, two balls and a bit that is stuck here, yes and a bit left, uh, I can knit little scarves in that bright orange. I love, 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 love bright orange. Um, gifting bright orange, I did gift it to my son for, he, it was part of his beanie uh, because he, he had asked for an orange beanie, but people not sure they're going to be liking mohair 
bright orange, you know, and I don't have enough of that. So maybe I can mix match. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'll, I'll be knitting uh, a sample that may be a sample for me or a sample that I will be gifting uh, in that mohair. And uh, uh, I, I guess the uh, scarf will look like uh, much more uh, uh, as uh, Pia has had intended the pattern to be and be looking at. But I will keep that one because it's a very practical design. Uh, it has ribs. It's not too uh, high on your neck. But when it's cold, your throat and front um, uh, chest is covered. Very practical design. And as I want to knit from stash and not really buy more yarn, uh, I will be using the front. If I like uh, the end, uh, the, the one I've, I will be knitting with the orange, and I want to... Um, make gifts, knit gifts with more neutral colors, um, maybe I will buy some white, some white or light blue uh, a lace weight mohair. Uh, but you know, <laughs> orange is the new black, right? Okay, so uh, uh, I'm now going to be talking about what I have in progress with uh, that yarn. Okay, I'm, I'm still wanting to be knitting with uh, an easy yarn to be taken care of. Mohair, mohair won't be easy to be taken care of. So this is why I'm very hesitant. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, so with that big bowl, I have two of them, so I have plenty. Uh, so I looked around for other uh, patterns for uh, other little scarves. Of course, there is the uh, Sophie, I guess it's Sophie's scarf. Let me check, I'll be right back. Yeah, yes, it's uh, the Sophie scarf. Everyone is knitting. Uh, Caddy Jack uh, bo uh, are, you know, reported about knitting that scarf and uh, um, uh, the knitting place to uh, Dana and... Um, sorry, yeah. Anyway, everyone is knitting that scarf. Right now it has 290 project, uh, projects. So it's the Sophie scarf from Petit Knit. But I had been having uh, some patterns in my library for a long time, three patterns in from my library for uh, a long time. So, you know, I looked around and, uh, you know, decided that I will test with that yarn, a pattern that is called Sweet Sweet Little Scarfet by uh, Amba O'Brien. So it's knitted in the round. Uh, I'm, you know, it's a fingering weight recommended. So lace, fingering and lace. So not, not too far away from that. Uh, knitted in the round, I guess I'm ready to knit. Uh, socks now, um, but I've been knitting a lot uh, with uh, a pointy end. I'm almost at the point where I need to decrease again. So if you look at that, and you know, with my needles, okay, you know, you can you can imagine how it's going to be. You know, I need to be knitting a bit longer, but you have it. There you have it, your little scarf with two little pointy ends. And um, that I can, I think it works much better uh, than uh, Pia's uh, pattern for that yarn. Uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to be making some of them. I, I need to knit a bit more, maybe, you know, a few centimeters more uh, or maybe not. But uh, um, uh, you see how it's going to be. And this is going to be knitted uh, with a very easy yarn as far as taking care of, an easy uh, color. Um, it's creamy white. I'm not sure why it shows more yellow than um, it actually is uh, in person. You see, it's, it's, it's a more yellow white. Yeah, it's a creamy white, but it's more white than 
yellow and cream and I'm not sure why this one is showing so yellow here you see it yeah it's it's very yellow maybe it's because of my white background I don't know but anyway an easy color an easy yarn as far as taking care of and uh, so uh, I knitted that in two evening sessions so not to not a long project and a very easy project so it's knitted in the round it's very it's going to be it's very thick it's very warm um i have other patterns i'll be talking about at some other point uh yeah but i think i'm going to be finishing that one and uh, uh i'll be uh, testing uh the heat wave pattern uh from pias uh um with the orange mohair that is going to be you know much 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 better suited for this pattern uh, and uh, uh, yeah I, there are other patterns I have in mind uh, I may buy also the uh, Sophie scarf pattern from Petit Knit to, to, to try it but uh, I liked I am um, what I don't like about the Sophie scarf if I may have a very unpopular opinion is the fact that it's uh, in stock, uh, it's in a garter stitch, and garter stitch stretches it out in the length. Uh, so you're gonna be knitting a, a scarf at some point, and it's gonna it maybe grow, and it you can maybe make two rounds around your neck at some point and uh, have it perfect length, and then you know after a while it's gonna be too long, so and not enough long enough, so for three rounds around your neck, but too long for the ones that... Anyway, what I liked in Pia's, it's uh, ribs. So that won't stretch that much. Um, and it won't uh, evolve that much, as, uh, as much as a uh, garter will. And so uh, that is what I liked in Pia's pattern, and that is what I did not like in Petit Knit's pattern. Um, this one is plain uh, stockinette in the round, so that's two uh, layers, very warm, it won't deform, so that meets my requirements, and it looks fine with the pattern. And I have several others I need to try <laughs> knitting, so maybe, you know, all of these persons, I have at least four uh, young women to be knitting for uh, this Christmas. Uh, may receive all the same or different ones and maybe none at all with any more hair uh, I don't know so uh, yeah you I will be keeping you in the loop and you know what I decide to do and uh, uh, yeah okay next is gonna be about uh, my cropped cardi I talked about <laughs> This card is for a long time now because I started it in, you know, in July, so a long time. Okay. Um, this was an impulse cast on because I uh, wanted to knit all the cotton from my stash. It was very hot and I wanted to knit in cotton. So I have two and a half, almost three balls. 100 balls, gram balls left of uh, uh, We Are Knitters uh, recycled cotton. That is only 2% of the fibers, it's, or 5%, it's, you know, what they can't uh, take out of the recycle, uh, recycling pieces, recycled pieces that they are using to, uh, um, you know, to produce the yarn. Um, anyway, I have already knitted two projects with that cotton, um, the Boniard Shawl by Stephen West and the other one, that uh, the Leaf Top Tea, and I do not recall uh, who made it. I'm going to check very quickly uh, here because I have it here. Uh, the Leaf Top Tea is by Bernat uh, Design Studio. Um, I wanted to use the remaining of um, this cotton and I had thought thinking that uh, uh, knitting the cropped cardi, you know, a cropped, that would be kind of a vest, but, you know, as a cardi, but very short sleeves, I would have enough. Two things. 
uh, or, um, even several things. This pattern is difficult for me to knit because I can't memorize um, the pattern by Noragon. Um, so I have to read every row. The, I read the chart for every row and, you know, both, uh, both patterns uh, from left and right side. So that's a difficulty. Um, I'm not sure I really liked uh, the way the cotton was looking with that pattern, but I could have gone with that. And uh, uh, I I did print took took a picture of the chart and you know and but I could not print it large enough so that I can see it without any effort. Uh, so I have to read the chart close by. Uh, because if you enlarge the picture, the quality of the picture is not good enough. So anyway, so read the chart, knit a few stitches and, you know, kind of memorize for 10 or 20, you know, 15 stitches what I have to do and do it and then read again. A bit of a pain. I could not uh, knit at night because uh, and this is mostly when I'm knitting at night. So, uh, uh, so. A difficult project that I had been, you know, leaving aside for a long time. Uh, what I had decided is knit two rows per day, at least. Okay. Uh, so um, I was doing that and at some point I had, you know, I, I had almost finished the first, um, uh, the first uh, repeat for the pattern and I spotted a mistake almost 10 rows before or even more and you know I said okay I'm gonna go with it nobody's gonna notice but I was only seeing that mistake so I said okay I'm gonna you know layer down uh, and uh, uh, fix my mistake and knit back up slip stitch patterns and twisted stitch patterns it's twi a twisted stitch pattern to repair over a repeat that was at least 15 stitches because because you know as I had made a mistake and I had you know um, uh, carried on that mistake uh, several rules and at some point it was not working and I was thinking okay okay it's, it's okay it's okay I'm not but it was not okay. So uh, it was so difficult to um, repair. For me, I spent several hours trying to repair and I was so frustrated, I ripped it out. So I, you know, I have only pictures um, uh, that I took. I, I ripped it out. I was so frustrated. So I now have these uh, almost, not, a, not quite, three balls of cotton I need to decide what to do with it, uh, with them. But uh, yeah, the cropped cardi has been ripped out and uh, I felt so much relief after I ripped it out. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, uh, I, I will need that project with, uh, not cotton, not with cotton. It's much better. Uh, with some kind of other yarn, the way Noragon knitted it uh, herself or had it knitted for her book. Because uh, there, there was a big truck somewhere. I'm not right on the street, so I'm not sure uh, anyway what that was. But uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure whenever I stopped, but uh, I will need the cropped cardi at some point with wool. Um, closer to the way uh, the model or the sample is uh, in her book. Okay, so that was a big relief for me to have this project out of my uh, attention because uh, it was so difficult, so difficult, mainly because of my eyes. Um, not the pattern is okay, it's, but you know it was too difficult for my eyes. Okay, so um, I had stopped filming, so I'm you know incorporating that new footage here because I, I'm not sure how it's gonna be. Uh, fitting with what I was saying before I moved to my um, uh, life uh, updates. But uh, um, I was thinking I wanted to do a giveaway. Uh, 
several of you have suggested, uh, sorry I did not write uh, who, who that was, um, that maybe I could give patterns away. Um, and I, patterns I liked and or I have knitted that and I can vouch for them. Uh, so I think it was a good idea. So I looked around in my own, you know, projects and, uh, uh, you know, something that also are maybe not on rivalry, but you have to have a pattern that you can, you know, easily get. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be giving away two patterns uh, for two, two of you. Uh, I have a list and then maybe what you could do is comment down below. Uh, and tell me which one you would like to get. And I kind of, you know, draw two numbers and the number of the comments will tell me who who will win. Of course, I am going to be asking you to be subscribed to the channel so that I can retrieve you. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, so in f as far as the patterns I have selected, I have two shawls two sweaters and a collar, collar, a cool. Uh, so for the shawls, I love Stephen West's patterns. I have knitted both the slip extravaganza and the painting triangles. I did enjoy knitting them very much for different reasons. Painting triangle is a bit easier if you're looking for an easy knit for a shawl. Painting triangles is a bit easier and uh, than slip extravaganza. That is a long term project. Uh, but uh, and then you can play with the colors, you know, in both patterns. Uh, you don't have to follow what Stephen West has done. So, yeah, so that's going to be for the uh, shawls these two patterns you uh, can tell me if if this which one you prefer and which one you would be knitting uh, for the sweaters i have two sweaters that uh, i have knitted and that i enjoyed knitted very much um, the first one is the sorrel sweater so i have not knitted the original you know i i have the summer sorrel um, but the pattern is, you know, I did enjoy very much knitting the summer sorrel. So maybe you are going to go into the sum summer season right now, or maybe you are entering uh, the winter season if you are in the same hemisphere as I am. So uh, uh, either, uh, you know, either the summer or the winter or the regular sorrel pattern. And uh, uh, the other pattern I enjoyed very much knitting was, uh, the, was the Lorenzen sweater. So it has puffy sleeves. So you need to be aware of that. It's closer to the body, even though I've knitted a bit boxier than what um, um, the sample or the pattern called for. Uh, but, you know, you have to be aware of that. Uh, the Sorel is, you know, can be worn by any kind of uh, body shape. Uh, so, uh, but I'm not sure the Lorenzen sweater, it's gonna be 100% uh, fitting about anyone. So, uh, okay, so that's the two uh, sweaters you may choose from, the Lorenzen sweater or the Sorel, awesome Sorel sweater. And one color that I enjoyed knitting uh, and I enjoy wearing is the scrag scraggly the color ah, so i forgot so uh, of course the shawls are stephen west the lorenzen uh lorenzen sweater god where is my page i had prepared but you know i changed things so uh uh yeah i changed things so i don't have a lily kate i think um uh the yeah lily kate friends for uh the lorenzen sweater and woolen pine for the sorrel and uh, once again butseria merits birds beggar for uh scraggly the color uh i love it uh i love how it looks i love knitting it you know much more than uh, uh the uh, cropped cardi 
even though I had to look at the pattern, pattern was much easier for me to, to, to knit because the repeats were much shorter and I could read the pattern more easily. And uh, yeah, you can knit it. I knitted with cotton, uh, Merit knitted it with wool. So uh, it can adapt to whatever, you know, uh, stash you have. So yeah, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five patterns you may choose from. You just choose one of them and you tell me in the comments why, uh, why you would like, you know, to knit that pattern. And maybe, maybe if you do have stashed yarn for that, because uh, the whole thing is not to buy yarn to knit that, these patterns, but use your stash. So if you have stashed yarn, which kind of yarn you would be uh, knit, knitting that piece. So yes, uh, so I, I'm going to now be moving to my um, uh, life updates. I'm not sure who it's going to fit very well with what I'm saying because I forgot uh, I wanted to talk about the giveaway. And uh, uh, so I'm just, uh, you know, recording that piece as an, an extra piece. So yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I will, I will um, uh, move now to my uh, life updates. Okay, so life updates, mainly about my mother, because uh, I'm going to be filming a video about uh, my uh, uh, August check-in from the Nobuy Year project. So you will see where I've been and what I bought. Um, so uh, you, you, you'll have about everything. Um, yeah, my, my mother is, is not doing good. You know, she, she called me this morning and she was crying and no, I called her and she answered and she started to cry. Um, I called her twice a day and uh, um, her memory is really, really in a bad, bad shape. I haven't had her checked yet. Um, and I think my father's present presence was masking a lot of her uh, memory and other kind of problems but now they are all surfacing because uh, she can't take care of all of that by herself um, she forgets so she called me crying because there was you know a big I called her and she answered the phone crying because there was what she thought was a big emergency and it was not at all it was dealt uh, I, I took care of it two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, anyway, uh, that's difficult and it's a heavy, heavy load on me for now. Um, students are not yet back uh, in school, so I'm not in the university, so I'm not teaching yet. I, ha I still have two weeks before I start teaching again. So I'm, I'm, I'm working, I have, you know, uh, when you work in a, a French university, teaching is not the only things you have to, um, to do. So I, I'm, I'm working mostly from home uh, before I start my teaching schedule. And my teaching load is going to be a bit heavier uh, up, to, up to Christmas. So um, I may have... I will have to change my filming schedule uh, because uh, I usually um, film on Wednesday mornings and I would have, you know, Wednesday night and uh, uh, Thursday night to edit the video and I would, you know, make upload it either Thursday night or Friday morning and uh, I make it live on Friday, my afternoon. So everything is my Paris time. So I'll be teaching uh, from eight to noon uh, on Wednesdays. And then I have from time to time more uh, teaching on the afternoon. I'm teaching every Tuesday afternoon and I'm teaching every uh, Friday mornings. So, and, and, you know, I have work, other work to do. So I like to keep my um my uh thursday and other day you know mondays are for meetings and everything 
Um, I, I, I could have my whole Thursday available for other things. And if I need to get up and you know start working and wait for some light and feel on a day that I have not planned to be um, filming, whatever, I will have to be thinking again uh, about uh, my, my filming schedule because uh, filming in the weekend to post on the Friday or, you know, I like to be posting on the Friday because people are more uh, willing to be watching videos during the weekend. So um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. We'll see. Or, you know, and pre-filming too much in advance during the uh, weekend to upload on the Friday. I, I guess there is a too big of a gap. So I, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to, to be doing. Maybe filming during the weekend and post on Wednesdays, for example. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. And it will also depend on how uh, much I have to be uh, taking care of my mother, how everything articulates uh, between my work schedule, my teaching schedule, my mother, uh, I will see. But anyway, my plans are to bring back the Willy News series, at least maybe once a month, no more than that, because uh, it requires a lot of work before filming and after filming to edit the video and find all the pictures and all the links and do all the research before that. So maybe once a month I'll film a, a Woolly News uh, video and I want to revive it because some people have talked about uh, the series and, and I, I think some people like it. The, the videos have less views as far as I can see, because I, I had some time, so I went to see, you know, I discover all the back, back, uh, backstage of <laughs> uh, YouTube um, when you upload videos. So these videos are less popular, but I enjoy making them. And if you enjoy watching them, I, I'll make them because um, I don't think, um, I deeply do not think uh, we should be driven as creators by views and everything. Most people are, and uh, I'm just driven by uh, how I enjoy uh, making these videos, how I enjoy talking with you uh, in the comments. So, uh, yeah, during the Woolly News series, there were also some interesting comments. Uh, maybe different people watch uh, different things, and, uh, but I enjoy filming both and I kind of start of uh, missing my Woolly News series. It's been, you know, two months. I haven't filmed any video. Uh, you know, I, I kind of miss it and I'm still collecting a bit of uh, things I want to be talking about. So maybe once a month or, you know, maybe once every six weeks is going to be enough for me to be talking about what I've seen and has, you know, caught my attention. By attention and interest so yeah um most mostly be doing what i enjoy filming and posting and if you do enjoy um uh, watching these videos uh yeah so please subscribe and get notified that helps the channel then that helps the channel being offered to new people uh to be watching so um uh, of them that way for you uh, new people to be watching and growing the community so uh yeah i i i do enjoy very much talking to you either on the comments or you know behind the scenes um and uh yeah I, I, that brings me joy and uh, uh switching for christmas uh, also uh, is bringing me joy and uh, i hope I hope that uh, your meeting can bring you also joy and happiness and that you can actively place happiness into your life and uh, because it's not going to be coming all by itself um, and uh, we do need to be proactive about uh, happiness, especially in these difficult times. So I'm, you know, but everyone can say they have difficult times right now. The world is a bit crazy. 
and your, the weather is crazy. We still have a war at our doorsteps. People are, you know, not feeling good around us and maybe we are not ourselves feeling good. So yeah, we need to find these little pieces, these little sparks of happiness into our day and, you know, cherish them and bring them into our life. And I hope your knitting is bringing you happiness. And uh, yeah, and that it, this video, you enjoyed watching it. And I thank you very much for that. And uh, I will see you in my next video.